Well, welcome back to Managerial Accounting. Um, as promised, I've recorded this video to uh, go over the exam and to make sure you understand the rationale behind uh, each of the answers, uh, most of which you got right and a couple of things that you got wrong. And we uh, always learn from our mistakes and errors that we make, provided we identify what the error was and we reflect on it and uh, promise not to do that in the future. So I hope you find this is, this is useful here. So there were 32 multiple choice questions, each worth two points each. I'll go over all those. And then there were uh, problem 33 worth six points, problem 34 worth 10, problem 35, and problem 36 worth 10. So we'll go through all these. The total number of points that you have is all reflected on your, uh, your cover page there. So you have the number right times two, then you got the number of points you earned on uh, 33, 34, 35, and 36. So 33, you can get a maximum of six, 34, 35, and six, you can get a maximum of 10. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, which of the following accounts will be uh, found on the income statement? So the only one of those accounts found on the income statement is D, cost of goods sold. The rest are all balance sheet accounts. Which of the following would be a period cost for a cake factory? Period cost is a cost that's not included in the cost of manufacturing the product. So for a bakery, clearly that's going to include flour, baker's wages, and frosting. Those are all part of the cost of the product. So the period cost is, uh, in this case, transportation out, which is D. Three, which of the following would be most likely be considered an indirect material by a manufacturer? Steel, uh, fabric, and lumber would directly would likely be traceable to the product. So the one that would be indirect material or overhead probably would be glue. It's difficult for most products. The amount of glue used is minimal, so it's difficult to actually track the glue to individual products. So that generally would be considered overhead or indirect material. Um, then we've given some information about Jensen Company and they report the following. And the question is, which is the period cost? This is kind of like the first uh, problem that you're gonna have uh, towards the end of the exam where you had a distinguish between period cost and product cost. The period cost is a cost incurred that does not become part of the cost of the product. So the one that would be a period cost would be the operating expenses of 175,000 D. Number five, the cost of indirect material in a small is a small uh, uh, portion of total production cost it would likely be classified as part of factory overhead. Direct labor, so, so direct labor uh, would be part of the product cost. It would, it would uh, it's one of the, the prime costs. Selling administrative costs uh, would be uh, considered a period cost. The miscellaneous cost would be a uh, period cost as well. So the one that would be uh, direct material, a small uh, portion of total cost would be part of the factory overhead. Six, which of the following is most associated with managerial accounting? Uh, managerial accounting is primarily um, reports that we prepare for people inside the company for decision-making purposes. We don't have to follow GAAP. It's not prepared for users outside the organization, and it doesn't always report on the entire company. So, But it may rely on estimates and forecasts, so the uh, answer there would be B. So uh, first eight questions are all from Chapter 1. So we have to get the occupancy rate at, at, at this hotel. So first of all, you have to figure out what the occupancy is per month. So they've got uh, 20, uh, 28 rooms. There's a misprinted, it's not 199. It's, uh, it's, uh, they get 100 rooms for 28 days, it's leap year. So uh, it's not a leap year and there are 28 days in February. So 28, that should be times 100, uh, gives you 2,800. And then that's the uh, the total potential. So if they had 28 room nights, they would have an occupancy of um, uh, of 100. But they didn't. They had uh, five. They had 500 guests spending five nights, and then they had 10 guests spending two nights. So you add those together, you get 2520. Divide that by uh, 2800, you get an occupancy rate of 90 percent. 0.90 is 90 percent. So C. Number eight. Which of the following is an example of a direct cost for a cell phone manufacturer and direct cost, uh, direct, which is this example, direct labor cost for a cell, a cell phone manufacturer? I would say the cost of an assembly line worker would be the, uh, would be correct. Uh, cost of lubricants, salary uh, of a plant supervisor, cost of phone components. Um, 
So if we're a cell phone manufacturer, the uh, example of direct labor cost would be the cost of uh, assembly worker wages. Cost of uh, cell phone components would be part of the cost of the cell phone, but it would not be part of direct labor. So the one there that's listed direct labor would be B. Control account for a job order cost sheet is work in process. So we collect the costs, they, they go into work in process until their job is completed and it gets transferred to finished goods. So the correct answer there is C. Period costs are those costs that are not involved in the production process. Uh, you're not gonna find these on the balance sheet. They're not direct labor, direct material or factory overhead. And they're not found on the job order cost sheets because they're not part of the direct cost of manufacturing uh, the product. So the answer is B. 11, which of the following would be missing in the accounting system of a service provider? Service provider does not have finished goods. Uh, it does not have a cost ledger, does not, uh, uh, which of the following would, would, would be missing. So they would have, a, sorry, they would have a cost ledger. They would have deferred revenues. They might have job order cost sheets, but they wouldn't have finished goods if they're providing a service. So the answer there is B. 12, the document authorizing the issuance of materials from a storeroom, that's a materials requisition. So it's the materials requisition that transfers materials out of raw materials into work in process. Uh, so when that's how you get the stuff out of the storeroom is you, you do a materials requisition form. 13, which of the following is characteristic of process costing? It accumulates costs for each manufacturing department within the, within the, within the factory. That is the definition of, of process costing. Uh, these, other, these other items are more job order costing than process costing. Okay, 15, materials on account during the year amounted to 190,000. Materials requisitioned in place in production is 156. The journal entry for the materials requisitions. So when the materials are requisitioned, it would be a debit to work in process and it would be a credit to materials. So they didn't ask for the, the amount uh, purchased, they asked for the journal entry to co record the requisition. So when we make the, the requisition, it, it, they are transferred out of the storeroom and goes into work in process. And the amount that was requisitioned was 156. So the answer there is C. 15, which of the following types of inventories does a manufacturer of business report on the balance sheet? Well, direct materials, work in process and finished goods are the three different types of inventory for a manufacturer. 16, and this is from chapter two. Last question for chapter. The following budget data are available for the Sharp Company. So they give us all this information. And they said, if the factory overhead is to be applied on the basis of direct labor hours, the predetermined factory overhead rate is, direct labor dollars, rather. So you take the amount of overhead, which is 179,000, divide by the estimated direct labor dollars, not hours, of 90,000, you get a rate of 1.99 which means for every dollar of labor, you've got one, one point nine, uh, $1.99 of overhead. Uh, number 17, there's a lot of information there, but the question is it's a pretty simple one. So we use process costing, all direct materials are added at the beginning of the process. Information about July activities is as follows. And the question is using FIFO, the number of units started and completed. So the number of units started and completed so started was 1,500, and the number of units that are still in ending inventory is 1,600. So started and completed. This is the number started, and this amount is incomplete at the end of the period. 1,500 minus 1,600 gives you 13,400. Always best to calculate the right answer and then go looking for it. Number two, which of the following is uncharacteristic of, um, of process costing? and we don't measure the cost for each completed job. We group the, uh, the cost by department or by process. Uh, we use several work and process accounts and process costing is useful, uh, use, uh, provides useful product information for decision-making. So all those are, are, are true. So we're looking for the one that is uncharacteristic. The one that is uncharacteristic is say process costing measures the cost of, completed, of a completed job. That would be more job order costing. Okay, so we start with some easy ones with equivalent units here. Uh, the following uh, data were assembled and it says the number of equivalent units produced with respect to materials. Number of equivalent units 
produced, the number of equivalent units produced with respect to material costs is. Materials are added at the beginning of the process, so the materials cost would be the actual number of units started. You don't have to make any adjustment there because materials are added at the beginning of the process. So if I started 48,000 units, then that would be the equivalent units in terms of materials that were put into the process. Number 30, in process costing, the amount of work in process inventory is valued by allocating uh, departmental costs between completed and partially completed units in process costing. All right. Number 21, this is one that inquires uh, quite a bit and I can see how you could have been hung up on this one because it takes a fair amount of time to, to deal with all the different equivalent units here. So what they're looking for is the total cost of units started and completed during the period. So to get the total cost of units started and completed during the period, um, then you have to figure out what were the number of units started and completed. And then you have to figure out the cost per unit for both materials uh, and conversion costs and then you have to uh, multiply those by the, by the equivalent units started and completed. So started and completed. Well, it tells us that we completed during the period 11,000 units. Uh, we, we started, we completed 11,000 units um, and the uh, number of units that were units completed during the period was 11,000. And the number of units that were uh, in inventory at the beginning of the period was 3,600. So if this is the number of units that were completed was 11,000, and you're using a FIFO basis, then 7,400 must be the number of units started and completed. That's a key number. Number of units started and completed is what they're asking us is the total cost of units started and completed. So you have to, that, that's the number you, once you figure out what the unit cost is, you're gonna multiply by the 7,400. So the number of units that were completed minus the number of units you started with gives us 7,400. Then the material equivalent units started and completed with 7,400. Um, then you have to take a look at materials are added at the beginning of the process. And they tell us that the we had 3,000 units at the end of the month. So 7,400 started and completed plus the 3,000 at the end of the month with regard to materials gives us equivalent units of 10,400. And then for conversion costs, what you have to do is you have to take a look at the stuff that was in beginning inventory. So you had 3,600 units in beginning inventory that were 25% complete, which means that this period, I must have 75% uh, completed those. So the, those, uh, the equivalent units uh, as far as conversion costs for the beginning inventory is 3,600 times 75%. And then the ending work in process, they tell us that the ending work in process, you had 3,000 units that were 20% complete with regard to conversion costs. So 3,000 times 0.2 gives us 600. So your equivalent units for conversion costs is started and completed of 24, plus the additional conversion costs for the beginning inventory, plus the conversion costs for the ending inventory gives us 10,700. So we're almost there. So all we need to do now is take the total materials cost, which is 83,200, divide by the equivalent units for material, which is 10,400. So we got equivalent, the, the cost per unit uh, for materials is eight. And then for the get the, uh, the cost uh, for the conversion, the conversion costs are twofold. You've got direct labor of 83 and you've got factory overhead of 25. You add those together, you get 88,000. And you have to divide that by the uh, equivalent units uh, for conversion costs, which we calculated 10,700. <clears throat> so when you, com when you combine those together, you get $8 is the per unit cost of materials. Conversion costs, you got to round out a couple of decimal points here, 8.2243. You add the eight and then the 8.2243, you get 16.2243 times the 7,400 units. So the total uh, cost of the, uh, the units started and completed is 120,660. And that's how it's calculated and that's where it is. So the correct answer there is B. <clears throat> uh, following production data were taken from the records of the finishing uh, department for June. So they give us the inventory at the beginning of the period. They tell us the completed units. They tell us the ending inventory is 60% complete. And they said the number of equivalent units of production in June 
uh, in the finishing department inventory. So at the end of June, we got 7,000 units um, and they're looking for the equivalent units of uh, conversion. So there are 7,000 units and they're 60% complete. So 7,000 times 0. 0.6 gives me 4,200. So my answer there is D. Uh, 23, 23 actually is the same fact pattern that we had back when we did uh, we did 21. But let's take a look at uh, uh, 23 here. So what they want us to figure out is jump is the total the total cost of the 3,600 units in beginning inventory that were completed during the period. Right. So the total cost of that beginning inventory work in process at the beginning of the period was forty thousand dollars. Remember, that already includes all the material costs. So all you have to do is add to that the conversion cost that uh, was uh, necessary to complete those units. Those units were 25% uh, were complete. So you've got 75% of the uh, additional work had to be done this period. So uh, 3,600 3, times 75% gives us 2,700. So that's the equivalent units of conversion cost. And we've got the same conversion cost number we had before, 88,000 divided by 10,700, or 8.2243. So uh, the total cost of the, uh, the beginning inventory uh, that was put into production during the period was the 40,000 that was there originally, plus the 27 equivalent units of conversion costs uh, at this price. And that gives you up to 62,206. So the answer there is A. <clears throat> Number 24, the cost of production for August shows conversion costs of 5,000 gallons, which are 70% complete. And, it's, uh, and the amount is 2,450. The conversion cost per equivalent unit in July was 75 cents, which the following best describes. So what you've got to do is you've got to take a look at what the costs were that was July cost of 75. To get the cost for, for, for August, you have to take the uh, 2,450. So that was the, the cost to complete the units, 2,450. And the amount of uh, units uh, that were, um, the, those units were 75% complete. So conversion cost 5,070% complete, that transfers into 3,500. So if you take 24550, and divide by 5,000 times 0.70 or 2,450 divided by 3,500, you get 70 cents. So if the conversion cost in July was 75, and now in August they're 70 cents, uh, it looks like the conversion costs have gone down by uh, 5 cents. And that is, in fact, what happened in C. Conversion cost decreased, indicating an improvement. <clears throat> uh, 25. What they want is they, uh, da, 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 da. the actual direct labors uh, for month of May are direct labor hours of 35, 350,000, the overhead allocated for May. So to get the overhead allocated for May, you've got to come up with the overhead rate, which is 13,500,000 divided by direct labor hours of 10 million, which gives you 1.35 per direct labor hour. And they told us that we worked 3,500 uh, direct labor hours for May. So your answer is 472,500. So the answer there is C. Okay, activity-based costing can be beneficial in allocating selling and administrative expenses to various products, which the fine would be the best allocation for a help desk. Help desk, I would say in terms of the choices, they would probably be, since the help desks are done primarily by phone calls, it would be the number of calls. Those other things are all you know, good measures, but as far as for a, a call center, it would probably the best match there would be the, uh, the number of calls. 27, we budgeted $700,000 worth of overhead. And they tell us what the actual overhead weights. Uh, the Pinnacle's plant-wide allocation-based machine hours was budgeted at 100,000. So you're using machine hours to come up with your overhead rate. So the actual, so your overhead rate is, uh, is, is $7 per hour. Okay, based on machine hours. Actual machine hours were 80,000. Total of 100,000 units were budgeted to be produced and 98,000 were actually produced. 
Pinnacle's plant ride overhead rate for the year is just 700,000. There's information that you don't need uh, to get the overhead rate. It would be the total budgeted overhead divided by the uh, budgeted uh, number of um, machine hours, which is 100,000. So it's $7 per machine hour, which is B. 28, <clears throat> which of the following is a reason for banks to use activity-based costing? Uh, best answer there is D to determine both the amount of the charge and the profitability of services provided. 29, which of the following managerial decisions relies on accurate product costing? All of these things, setting a sales price, discontinuing a product line, establishing a product mix, all of those are gonna be dependent upon accurate products, product costing. So the best answer there is D. Uh, okay, so now we've got uh, produces two similar products, small table lamps and desk lamps. The total factory overhead budget is 640,000 with 400,000 estimated direct labor hours. So your, your uh, overhead rate there is 1.6 times the, the, the direct labor hour. So for every direct labor hour, it's $1.6 worth of overhead. It, uh, da, 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 da. Using a single factory overhead rate, uh, the factory overhead that they would apply to small table production of actual direct labor hours for the period was 285. So you take the 285, you multiply by the overhead rate of 1.6, and you get 456,000, and that's one of my choices. And next one, selling administrative expenses are allocated to different products for decision-making. They should be reported on the financial statements as uh, they are not part of the cost of the goods manufactured. They're not part of overhead. They're not part of the cost of goods sold. They are a period cost. <clears throat> and the last one that we have here, um, the overhead for both the overhead from uh, both production departments is allocated to each unit of product A if Blue Ridge Manufacturing uses the multiple production department factory overhead rate. So multiple uh, multiple department factory overhead rate means we have to come up with a rate for the two different departments. So for the painting, um, painting we've got two hundred and forty eight thousand dollars two hundred forty eight thousand dollars worth of overhead. And we budgeted 10,000 direct labor hours. So 248 by uh, divided by 10,000 gives us 24.8 is my rate per direct labor hour. And for finishing, you've got $72,000 worth of overhead to be budgeted. And you've got 10,000 direct labor hours. So 72 divided by uh, 10,000. 72 divided by 10,000. That does not look right. That should be $7.20. It's not twenty-eight eighty. It's it's seven dollars and uh, and twenty cents. So that should be seven dollars and twenty cents there. Seventy-two thousand divided by ten thousand is seven two. <clears throat> and then as far as product A, it's got sixteen hours in painting. So sixteen hours times the painting hour, painting overhead rate of uh, twenty-four point eight. And then for finishing, it's uh, four hours in finishing, and the rate is not twenty-eight eighty. The rate is actually seven dollars and twenty cents. So 16 times 2480 plus seven times uh, 720 gives you $425.60, right? So that was the multiple choice part. Catch your breath here, we'll go through the problem part. And the problem parts, these are, I think were all pretty straightforward. I don't think there was any surprises here. So given all this information, you had to determine what the product, product costs were and what the period costs were. Product costs are what becomes part of the cost of the product. So number of you got sales, sales is not part of the cost of the product. Sales, you know, on the income table, you're gonna show sales minus the cost of goods sold. So the sales is the actual revenue that they've earned from the sales. It's not part of the cost of the product. It's not a period cost. So your product, production cost here, yeah, that would include direct materials. It would include depreciation on factory equipment. It would include indirect labor. It would include direct labor. It would include factory rent. It would include factory utilities. It would also include indirect materials. So those are all your product costs, giving you a total of 35,000. The only period costs that are shown there are the sales salaries of 15,006 and the office salary of 8,500. Important, by the way, for all these things to get, uh, is to show your work. Don't just give me a number to show your work. 
and it uh, shows me your thought process. And also I can give you partial credit if you show me your work. If you don't show me your work and your answer is wrong, there's no way I can give you partial credit. Okay, next one here was a fairly simple job order costing. So they give us all sorts of information, uh, overhead based on a predetermined over rate of uh, $9 an hour. Um, we used eight tons of direct material at a cost of $600 a ton. So eight tons times 600. Um, direct labor was 80 hours uh, and $21 per hour. And uh, the overhead rate is $9 per hour. And uh, you worked 80 hours to complete the job. So total uh, total cost of the job is materials, labor, and overhead. And it's 7,200. Most of you got that correct. Now here, we've told you what the equivalent units are. It says the cost per equivalent unit of direct materials and conversion in the bottling department of Canadian Ace Brewing are $47, 47 cents and 15 cents, right? So your materials cost is 47, your conversion cost is 15. So what they want, determine the cost of completed and transferred out of production and the ending work and process inventory. So here's your total cost of the beginning inventory was given at uh, $3,500. Then inventory at the beginning of the period um, with regard to materials, zero equivalent units. And with regard to the th conversion cost, it's 3,000 units, 3,000 times 15 cents. That's where you get the 450. Started and completed were 52,000 units. They told us 52,000 units. There's your material cost. There's your conversion cost. That gives me 32,240. So the beginning inventory plus the started and completed, that would be the goods transferred out. The cost of the goods transferred out is 36,190. And the ending work in process, uh, ending work in process they told us was 3,500 with regard to direct materials times 47 cents and 2,100 with regard to conversion times 15 cents. There's your 1960. So there's your, your calculations and you can show your proof there. Total completed and transferred out, 36,190. Uh, ending inventory, 1,960. Next one, um, which I think was the last one here, was just you had to figure out the cost of handbags and the cost of moccasins. And they, you had to come up with your um, factory overhead rate here. It says the, the factory overhead is budgeted for 360,000. They use a single uh, departmental uh, overhead rate of 60,000 units. Each unit requires two hours of direct labor. Moccasins are budgeted for 40,000 pairs. Each pair of moccasins requires three hours of labor. So direct labor hours, uh, handbags, 60,000 units, two direct labor hours. So you got 120,000 direct labor hours there. And moccasins, 40,000 pairs, three direct labor hours gives you 200, uh, gives you 120. So your direct labor hours uh, for both of these is 240,000. Your single overhead rate, you've got 360,000 worth of budgeted overhead divided by 24,000 hours. So your direct, your overhead rate is $1.50 per direct labor hour. So to make a handbag takes two hours. So two times 150 gives you three. And to make a moccasin uh, is three hours. So $1.50 times three gives you 450. Okay. So I hope you found that review useful. I would say, you know, going forward, the exams are likely to be similar. So get used to that multiple choice format uh, and then get used to having problems that are very similar to the ones we do in class in the homework. Okay. So until next time, adios, au revoir, hasta luego, and I uh, wish you well in future exams. If you did well, keep up the good work. If you didn't do as well as you would have liked, ask yourself, what can you do different? And what can I do additionally to assist you? All right. Be well, everybody. Have a good evening. I have to figure out how to stop recording here. Stop recording.